hey, guy, just do the thing that people want. That's your job as a politician, to do the thing that the people want. You represent the people. People want a thing. You do the thing. Make it happen. All right. Welcome back to the party, everybody. I am your host, Lutch, a.k.a. The Indian Jesus, here to resurrect the second coming of Common Sense. Let's party. So we're all talking about 2024, who is going to be the president, what's going on, all of that stuff. I'm not necessarily interested in keeping up with the news as much, but I am interested in keeping my finger on the pulse of what people are thinking uh, between now and the time that we are going to be uh, casting our votes. So uh, this is a little clip here from Part of the Problem with Dave Smith. And he brings up a great point. I've been going back and forth between what I think about Trump and what I think about DeSantis and what I think about all of these people, but brings up a great point here. Let's check it out. Uh, he's been largely removed from Talking about Trump. the kind of high profile position that he occupied mm -hmm. for, you know, basically his whole life, but particularly in the realm of politics from, say, like 2016 to 2020. Um, you know, he's not on Twitter, although technically I guess he could be, but maybe he's contractually obligated not to use his Twitter. Yeah, he has a thing with Truth Social for, I think, a certain amount of time, maybe till the end of the year that he has to only use Truth Social. But I don't know how well he's going to do in the general election if he doesn't get back on Twitter as soon as that is up. He needs to get back on Twitter ASAP. But the relevance of him being on TV every single day to not even being on Twitter was a drastic, drastic change. He's not, uh, you know, his his uh, rallies aren't covered on mm -hmm. on television every day like they used to be. Um, but he's still there, just doesn't quite have the, the megaphone that he used to have. And I personally think Donald Trump is a much weaker uh, political force than he was in 2016. Absolutely. Or certainly when he was the president. Um, I think he doesn't have the same magic. I think his um, enormous failures during the covid regime are very, very challenging to make up for, especially as we've mm -hmm. said before on the show, especially when your whole thing is like, bottom line, I win, you know? And then your final year in office is the biggest L in modern American history. It's just, it's hard to write. It's yeah, 100% that, you know, you can't be the guy that says you win and then have, as Dave puts it, the biggest L in history. That wasn't necessarily entirely his fault, of course, but there's a lot that he did wrong. But especially now that we are, uh, uh, you know, far enough away from it to do a retrospective, uh, what he could have done. There wasn't many things that he did very well when it comes to the whole uh, Rona regime. So that's definitely going to affect how ignited his base is. That's definitely going to affect, especially, you know, with the warp speed thing. And he is hanging on to that. That's a losing battle. He needs to get with the time and do things that matter today. But I think that is what Dave is about to talk about. To rectify that um, or reconcile that, uh, it's very hard to be the guy bragging about creating the vaccines when pretty much your entire base has, you know, uh, turned on this the whole vaccine yep. regime. But every but... now and then you de do see a moment where you realize, like, kind of the political brilliance that Donald Trump has. And quite often... It's, it's hard to even call it political brilliance. It's almost just, as I've said before, it's almost like there are these this winning hand that no one in the establishment wants to play. And Donald Trump's just like, these cards are just laying on the floor. But these are pocket aces? I'll, I'll play pocket aces. So if you haven't figured out already, he's talking about East Palestine, Ohio, and how just nobody went there, and specifically Joe Biden left the country to give half a billion dollars to Ukraine. And he's just like, oh, hmm, maybe I'll just do this. That may not be brilliance in and of itself, but I absolutely would call that political brilliance because sometimes the most brilliant answers are the most obvious ones. Those are really good hands. Yeah, it's like, like securing the border. It's just such there a like, you go. common sense thing that like the vast majority of Americans want. It's like an unbelievable political winner. And you have, you know, the left flirting with basically like, de facto open borders and then you have you know like even the republicans like jeb bush would be like well they come here for compassion because they're such nobody great people cares. and blah 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 and then trump's like nobody cares build a wall and everyone's like hmm, i like that guy. it's just like no one else <laughs> is willing to, to play this hand and he's willing to play this thing that's very politically popular so maybe he wasn't talking even about east palestine but this falls right in line with all of those things that it's like hey guy just do the thing that people want 
That's your job as a politician to do the thing that the people want. You represent the people. People want a thing. You do the thing. Make it happen. So in a move of political brilliance, Joe Biden makes this trip out to uh, um, Eastern Europe, uh, pops by the war zone in Ukraine, (laughs) and then over to Poland and and all this stuff, rallying support, uh, promising another half a billion dollars or whatever for uh, for Ukraine. Not for you. Not for East Palestine. Not for the people who are hurting. For Ukrainians wearing swastikas. He's out there talking about how we're going to take care of your social security or whatever the they call it out there in ukraine their pensions and shit like that and donald trump just goes not here you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go to ohio i'm gonna go there and start handing out things and it is just so obvious what it, like like if you were you know and and okay i, I ron DeSantis. i mean he's not officially running for president yet but there's a lot of speculation of that mm-hmm. he's kind of not in a position where he can do things like that Right. That's a good that's a good point to make that that's not really it, it, it would seem a lot cheaper. If a governor from a different state was going over and be like, oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm just doing it. You know, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's just a photo op. It's just a photo op. Even if it was just a photo op, he did more than Biden did. He did more than anybody else did. Uh, when you're the governor of Florida, you can't just go to Ohio and start doing right. things for their people. You're in a way kind of committing the same crime that biden is that's a good you know point. what i mean by going to ohio but yeah if he's going over and and helping people in ohio then floridians can be like hey uh we got issues here why don't we deal with those just like all americans can be like hey we've got issues here joe biden what are you doing over in ukraine but trump's like i'm free to do this i got money in the bank i'm just gonna fly there and buy a bunch of shit and hand it out to people it's a really smart move that i think is much like playing the immigration card it's just such a winning hand mm-hmm. to play. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Joe Biden is off worried about doing things for the Ukrainians. I'm worried about doing things for Americans. If they- and so even if you want to think of the immigration and the wall as something that made a lot of people hate Trump, the fact is the issue of immigration, the issue of people coming over illegally is something that is uh, more or less bipartisan. Even if liberals have a different perspective on it, even if some liberals do want just open borders, everybody just comes in. Most people don't feel that way. Fits right into his whole America first brand. I, I don't know what else to say about it other than it's just a fucking brilliant move. It's crazy to me. It is insane that we have a sect of the government that has been labeled, whether they labeled themselves or otherwise, America first. Why is not the entire government America first? <laughs> That that should be first, America. But nope, Ukraine needs our help, right? Couldn't agree more. And it's uh, amazing how many losses he's taken prior to this. Uh, you got COVID. You got January 6th. You've got claiming he won an election, not getting his signature agenda of a wall. But this one was literally just right there, and he actually capitalized well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Definitely. of course, what was pretty funny about this was the media reaction to it. Man, it's fun watching these people melt down. Oh, my goodness. They it's it's so cringy how two years out from this man being the president while the sitting president is doing nothing. And in fact, giving away money that could go to these people. The corporate media is still still. Going after Trump in any angle to make him look bad, despite the fact that he's the only one who went out there to help those people. Um, so first I want to play, as a, Tom Elliott, oh, we got a, some a great clips. Twitter Let's follower, go. He, go. he posted a bunch of these clips. I was like, oh man, I really want to like capture some of this stuff I've seen. And then of course he has it right there. So let's play first. This was a great little uh, super cut that he put out. That's what he calls them when he cut. Let's do it. media clips together. This was more a, a, a taste of the, the corporate press reaction to Joe Biden going over to uh, to Ukraine. Joe Biden has put solidarity ahead of his own personal safety. Yep. Air raid sirens and no real guarantee of security. Wait, they said he, uh, I got to re- listen to that again. I thought they were saying he put Americans over his own safety, but he put Ukrainians over his own going safety. Going over to, but, uh, to Ukraine. But, uh, let's see it again. Joe Biden has put solidarity ahead of his own personal safety. Has put solidarity above his own personal safety. Did he though? 
air raid sirens and no real guarantee of security. As air raid sirens blared. This was incredibly dramatic, Andrea. It was historic as well. Historic, timely, and brave. Let me ask you guys a question. Would it be beyond the corporate media to put in a fake air raid siren? Because not only does he not uh, uh, cower in fear, he doesn't even react. I think we're going to show a clip. He doesn't even react. I don't care how tough you are, which Biden certainly isn't. If you hear an air raid siren go off, you're at least going to be like, oh, what's going on? We're good, right? I don't know if he even knew what that was. The first American president to go to a war zone with no U.S. military presence for security on the ground. Uh, American presidents have made dramatic trips before. Nixon to China, dramatic. Kennedy, Reagan to the Berlin Wall. Trump to North Korea. And presidents have visited U.S. troops. Oh, yeah, just skip over that one. Troops in war zones, but never like this. Took five Except when Trump went to North Korea, which wasn't an active war zone, but may as well have been. And it could have been for him. Find a, a day of this kind of presidential bravery in a war zone, you've got to go all the way back to 1864. With Biden's trip uh, to Europe, you know, he is he is welcomed as not only the, the frankly, the savior of Ukraine. The savior of Ukraine. OK, good for you. I'm looking for the savior of America. Can we get that, please? But also the savior of Europe as a whole. It's historic. I don't care about the savior of Europe either. I'm sorry. But unless you are the savior of America, then I don't want you doing anything else. It's the first time that a U.S. president has gone into an active war zone that the U.S. military does not have control over. Because the U.S. military has control over North Korea, right? Or wait, no, that's, that's not how that works. So even though there was no war, they could have just shot him, right? And against all odds, um, it was successful. They can against all odds? What were you doing that the odds were against you? It seems like you just went there with a check, shake hands, photo op, and come back home. Against all odds? What are we talking about? Continuing threat, quite literally sounding all around. All right, so look at this. I think they're about to show some, some clips of the, the air raid siren going off. Does this seem real? Does this seem like he's actually hearing anything and not reacting? And does it seem unreasonable that these legacy media companies might have just footage of him walking and then in post-production just add a little siren? Obviously not that siren, but it's just that easy. Two leaders. The skies here are not safe. And in fact, an air raid siren went off while right, President Biden was here. Seeing the American president there walking the streets of Kiev. See, neither of them, not only do neither of them react, but the people around them don't react. It's not about uh, being fearful. It's about a natural human reaction. Unless you knew that siren was going to go off, it doesn't make sense that you would have zero reaction. Let's watch. Well, air raid sirens Nobody literally here. sounded Nobody's in that moment about possible incoming fire from Russia. Now the wail of an air raid siren. Air raid sirens None wailing of these in people. the background. Seemingly, I have no information at all. I am purely speculating. But that seems fake. Be undeterred by an air raid siren. Undeterred by the sound of air sirens. How did nobody move? President Biden's ability with his aviators on to walk through in broad daylight in Kiev. The swagger of... Swagger? Swagger. Swagger. This trip. Not just the, 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 the execution of the secrecy, but the swagger of it on display. All right, there you go. I... I don't even know. Do you need to add anything to it? This is as we flirt with a nuclear confrontation. This is what the corporate press is giving you. Just lap dogs. Just yeah. so, and it's so preposterous. All of it just so ridiculous. You see the, the swagger, Rob. When you see Joe Biden walk, the only thought a normal person has in their head is he is not very good at walking. <laughs> yeah, I was going I thought he was going to say the only thing uh, people think is swagger and I was going to say, "Oh, I guess I'm alone here." But yeah, he's right. He is not doing good at this thing called walking. It's more like of a shuffle. At, he, it's more of an <laughs> old man shuffle. Like, I, but I don't care what type of sunglasses you throw on him or what sirens you have going off in the back. We're all looking at the same picture, but they're all just, oh my God, this is amazing. So here's the posture. And this is what's so great about what Trump did here. Here's the posture of the corporate press. 
Mm-hmm. This is amazing. This is the greatest trip ever. This is like Churchill. And this is just, just I, I don't know. You might have to go back to 1802 to find something as terrific and brave as this. Just amazing. Put unity over his own safety, just courage and swagger and the go greatest off. thing ever. Preach. And then Trump just goes to Ohio, turns it all around on them, turns it all around on them. It shows how out of touch they are. Uh, but by the way, because Biden goes over to a war that is losing popular support here in America. Um, and their response to the Trump thing was great. There's a bunch of clips. I, we don't have enough time to play all of them. But this was one that I thought was particularly interesting on CNN, uh, where this is, by the way, just a CNN analyst uh, breaking down. Um, so let's let's check out this clip. So this is, you know, the, 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 the difference in how people are treated in the news. One person did a thing that most people like, which we're about to see how the, the news media is going to frame that. And we just saw something that Biden did that most people didn't like and how they framed that. Uh, Russian aggression. And, and to, to, to try to undercut that under the auspices of America first and, and, and photo ops. And- yeah, yeah. The America first. That's just a, a smokescreen. McDonald's passing out branded water isn't isn't a sufficient response. They want to draw the contrast. But it's a false. Yes, we want to draw the contrast. False contrast. It's a it's a false contrast. Did he really just say that? Isn't isn't a sufficient response. They want to draw the contrast, but it's a false contrast. It's how is it a false contrast? It's a false choice. As you said, it's personal for you. Your family yeah. is from there, and uh, you bring great perspective. We got Don Lemon Thank there. You. Let's see if there's some action. The the criticizing by so he's, so being, he's just fear. What a false choice. This idea of criticizing Biden because he, oh, this America first, you go there. It's it's a total false choice. He also mentions in there that the priority, obviously, is Ukraine. The priority to them is Ukraine. They say it in plain English. They don't care about you. That's what really matters. It's not Ohio. They're like, nope, it's not a false choice. Like, uh, resources are finite. Yep. Right? Every bit of resources that we pour into Ukraine are resources not being poured into our our country now. Yeah, I'm sure that East Palestine could have done absolutely nothing to help their situation with $500 million. It's not like their air quality is uh, bad. It's not like animals are dying. It's not like kids are getting lesions. It's not like any of that is happening and they might need money to relocate because people can't just afford to uplift their lives because they have a mortgage. Nah, that's a false choice. That's just factually the case. It's not a false choice at all. Like that money is going somewhere or that. That's like, yeah. I, I don't know, like try this in your personal life. You know, if if your wife's like, whatever, she's like, did you just gamble away $100,000 when we have bills that are, are, are past due? And you go, that's a false choice. Hello. It's not a choice between me gambling $100,000 or this. We can do both. It's like, no, it's actually. Can you love? It's, it's, that's a choice it's um so just ridiculous but you can just see how angry it makes him that of course of course this is a winning hand that trump is playing and i mean you know he goes on a little bit longer check out the video uh, for sure but just more of the same more of the same somebody like myself who was never trump hated trump because i was brainwashed by the media now can see that hey you know he might actually be the best choice for america I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he's not. I'm saying he might be. And without respectable news media to be able to determine what's going on, we will never know as long as you follow them. I don't know. What did you guys think? Did you know? Did you even know that uh, uh, Trump went to East Palestine without somebody crapping on him for it? Do you care that Biden went to Ukraine? Would you rather have that half a billion dollars stay in America? Let me know in the comments below, guys. Thank you so much for partying with me. Once again, I am your host, Lutch, a.k.a. The Indian Jesus, here to resurrect the second coming of Common Sense. Until next time, guys, I am out of here. Peace.